in our last session, we had opened a frame stack from a series of numbered files. And I'll do that again. Let's go to horse jumps. And Daisy is the name of the horse. We'll begin with 01 Daisy Jump. And we will now choose the last numbered file as prompted. 20 Daisy Jump. Whenever you save a sequence of frames as numbered files, you have to put the number at the beginning of the file name. So let's call this Horse Jumps and save it to the desktop. I'll accept the default number of onion skins and storage type. And here we are. We've got our 20 frames. And just to remind you of what that looks like, we had applied a script to the entire movie, and I'll make a script from scratch now so you can see how that works. In the script panel, I will tap the Record a New Script button, this blue button here, and I will make a gradient expression. I've opened my gradient panel, and I am going to use the Express in Image command, but I want to switch to a different gradient here. This is the one I like best. So now I will use that Express in Image command. As you recall from an earlier project, you have to determine the mapping of the luminosity of the gradient to your image. So that looks pretty good. I'll click OK. But I'm not done with my script yet. I want to also add a soften focus effect. There is kind of a grainy look here because I believe the scans were made of print images and they didn't use a descreening device. So let's just go to our focus collection of effects and use soften. I think a little bit of softening is going to be sufficient. That looks good. So I'll click OK. And now I will stop my script playback and I'm prompted to name it. I'll call it gradient soft, indicating those two effects. And when I click OK, I find that that has become a script in my script panel. I will undo those two effects on frame one so that I have a pristine frame stack. But now I will use the command in my script menu to apply the script to the movie. And the gradient expression and soften is quickly applied to each of my 20 frames. And now I can see the result is a very colorful, soft focus jumping horse. Now I want to introduce you to rotoscoping, which is a way that you can use the action in a frame to create a drawing that differs in some way. It can either be a very sketchy or very detailed drawing or painting of the figure, or it can be a totally different character that's based on the action. You will see what I mean when I open an example. I'll just leave it as untitled in the frame stack just to show you what I mean here. This is a 36 frame movie that is based on actually 12 frames of action from another series of photos by Edward Mybridge made in the 1870s. On some of these, I used a Van Gogh brush. On some of them, I used a barbed wire pen. And I can't remember what the effects were on the third one, but I think I also used an express gradient in image effect. So. It's quite a lively action experimental animation using rotoscope. That is, each frame was stepped forward and I had a tracing paper feature so that I could see where to sketch. I'll just close that up and dismiss it. Now there was a rotoscope feature in the movie menu in previous versions of Painter, but they've taken that away. It was called Set Movie Clone Source. And so I've had to devise a workaround, and you'll see how that goes when I demonstrate it. So I'm going to dismiss this sequence. I'm going to open the original sequence once again from numbered file. So I'll go to File, Open, choose first numbered file, go to Daisy number one, click that, choose my last numbered file. And that will be daisy number 20. 
I'll open that. And let's call it Roto Horse on the desktop. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to the last frame and I'm going to erase it or delete the contents of it. So select all, Command or Control A, and delete. Now I'm going to turn on my show onion skin layers, which is like tracing paper. And what it's showing me is the previous frame, but the frame I'll be working on is blank. You don't really see that here. So I'm gonna take a nervous pen, which I've added to the animation custom palette, Using a dark red, I will very quickly just kind of scribble in the figures of the man and the horse. I'm going to do the same thing for all 20 frames, but I don't expect you to sit through that. So I'm just going to do a few and then I'll give you a little break and we'll come back and you'll see that all my frames have been completed. At this point, I'd like to see actually what it looks like without the onion skin. There it is. That's going to be very lively when it turns into an animation sequence. So back to Onion Skin and step back to the previous frame. Now I want to delete the contents of frame 19 and see number 18 through my Onion Skin. And I will, once again, using my Nervous Pen, and I might as well stick with the same color, although I could change colors. I could even change the brush variant to make a very lively animation with different styles, just as I had with that little girl that was running. But I'll just keep things simple here and leave it to your imagination to come up with other kinds of combinations. So stepping backward once again, erasing frame 18 and seeing number 17 with my onion skin, I will scribble some nervous lines over here once again. So. I will give you your break now, and when we come back, I'll have all 20 of my frames prepared in this way. Well, I've completed nearly all of my sketchy, scribbly, nervous frames. I'm at the point where only frame number one is left, and when I delete the contents of frame number one, I have nothing to look at. Recall that I erased the contents of frame 20 and used it to copy frame 19. Let me turn off my onion skin so you can really see what's going on. I still have frame number one. I'm going to have to get rid of it. So let's go back to frame number one and I will simply go to delete frame number one. And now I have a relatively clean, although very sketchy, nervous animation. It doesn't seem to matter much that I am missing one frame. I'm missing frame 20 because I deleted it in order to sketch frame 19. So a little bit of planning might have prevented that from happening, but this is close enough. Let's see if we can apply a script to this sequence, but I don't want to risk losing this particular set of frames, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to do save as numbered files and call them 001 Roto Horse and put that on my desktop. There we go. Now I am safe to apply a script. Let's make a new script. I think I would like to have it be a focus effect that is more of a blur. Let's create a zoom blur. And it's going to be centered right there. We don't want it to be too strong, but let's see how that looks. That's kind of interesting. So now I'm going to stop the script and call it zoom blur. Just a very simple effect. And now I will go to my apply script to movie and each of those frames is now going to have a zoom blur applied to it. Let's see how that looks. Well, I'm not sure that was as exciting as I thought it might be, but thank goodness I still have my original scribbly nervous pen frame stack, so I have not lost anything by this. Well, I suggest that you try some of these MyBridge sequences for some rotoscope action and prepare some scripts to add to them.